case we have anybody else that wants to speak. Well, money. Oh. <laughs> hey, this Jimmy, is I signed up, right? All right, I'm going to call the Lincolnton don't have a Gavin. Board of Adjustment meeting to order. Um, it's, it's all happens. Ashley's not here. This all falls apart. Well, it might be the fact that it was 80 degrees. <laughs> You're like, I'm not coming in here. <laughs> I was sweating a lot. <laughs> there you go. All right. Let the record show that we have four regular members present. Uh, Becky Shaw is absent and is John Waters is our first alternate uh, sitting in for her today. If uh, I can direct your attention to the minutes from the previous meeting and if anybody wants to make a motion to approve or make any motion for any amendments. Make a motion to approve the minutes from last meeting. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right the meeting the mo minutes have been approved. Before continuing, do, 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 do. It's not judicial, so you don't have to say it today. Oh, cool. Um, all right. Well, then the first case is BOA-2-2024. Two applications from Century Community Southeast LLC requesting permits for sales offices located in the Carpenter Farm subdivision. Okay, so our ordinance requires that temporary structures um, come before the Board of Adjustment for approval. And the reason there's two applications is eventually they're going to use one of the houses they build for their sales office, but temporarily they're going to use a sales trailer. And, and so in order to get those approved, it has to come before the Board. So just real quick, um, this is this lot right here, the very first one, they want to put a temporary sales trailer there. And then once the single family home on this lot is built, they're going to use that for their sales office. And once the, they're finished needing a sales office, it'll just be sold as a single family home. Does anybody have any questions? What about where the sales trailer is going right now? Are they going to build a, a house on that lot or is it just going to be in the Once the trailer is gone. And that is a lot that will be built. Okay, it'll be sold. All right. Yeah. So yeah, the sales, um, and the sales trailer is required to meet all setbacks just like a house would. All right. Is there any requirement for landscaping or no. not on temporary not on temporary uses? Thank you. Is there a time period for temporary, or is it just until whenever they just decide like, hey, we've got the other one built, we can move over there? The I mean, there's not a time frame. Okay. I, the ordinance. Let's look what the ordinance says. Uh, I don't think there's a time frame. Oh, one year. So okay. they the the permit's good for one year. And they'll have to re-up. If for some reason they're not finished with the sales trailer, they'd have to come back before the board and re-up the permit. Is the trailer already there? The trailer is already there. They're not using it. They're it's they're waiting on the permit. A trailer that's already there. Okay. As a sales office. Yes. They just had it delivered at the same time as the construction trailer. Gotcha. Which doesn't need a permit. Gotcha. All right. Uh, Anybody have any other questions? Any concerns? No. Do I hear a motion to approve or disapprove? Make a motion to approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, motion is approved. Do I hear a motion for adjournment? So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Okay. All right. I will call the planning board meeting to order uh, for April 16, 2024. Uh, I ask the board to direct their attention to the minutes of the previous meeting and entertain a motion for approval of the minutes. I make a motion to approve as presented. I have a motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. We, minutes are approved. I'm now going to move to open the public hearing. Uh, we're going to call the first uh, case, which is CZ-1-2024 application from True Homes. LLC requesting the conditional rezoning of 45.6 acres of land from O I uh, and R15 districts to the planned residential district PRD to construct 180 townhomes. The subject property lies south of East Gaston Street and west of US Highway 321, parcel ID 89926. I hand it over to you, Gene. Okay. Um, so you already said the first piece of what I'm going to say, which the existing zoning is currently office institutional and R15. So by right, if you look at this purple, this is office institutional. 
they could actually go in and build duplexes there permitted by right and then this blue section is r15 they could do single family lots in that blue section by right um, they are proposing to rezone to plan residential development um, that and this says with SHO what that means is because this property runs along 321 it's in the special highway overlay district it just gives you some increased setbacks along that highway line um, and we just added that just to make sure that it was clear that it's still in the special highway overlay district um, currently it's a vacant lot and the proposed use would be a townhome community this is just an area of the land this is the YMCA right here um, the courthouse some doctor's offices 321 and then the neighborhood the, the most of the people that are going to speak are from the neighborhoods to the east and to the south it's just a picture from the street off of Gaston Street extension this is a copy of the site plan um, it's 44.4 48 acres they're going to do 180 units maximum um, currently under PRD you're allowed to do 14 units per acre they're only requesting to do 4.05 units per acre so this would be considered a low density project I'm going to skip the the pictures just because they have in their report and just to speed things along currently the land use plan shows this in institutional office planning area which those are appropriate for um, new or expanded institutional uses or office developments they're generally compatible with adjoining residential uses um, so if this were to get approved staff would recommend amending the land use plan to show it in mixed use residential commercial um, we felt like that would be an appropriate um, future land use and as you can see this dark green color that's already mixed use residential commercial as well there are many many um, comments and conditions of approval I don't want to go over every single one of them um, have y'all read them all though just so that you know because if this were to get approved these would all be conditions of the approval um, but they would need to calculate the required number of parking spaces for the units and show on the plan um, they would have to put sidewalks on both sides of the street of the entire development um, and then along East Gaston Street on the side where the project would be and they have to meet the city of Lincoln's UDO um, they would need to add a detailed landscaping plan showing the location of the landscaping as well as the number of proposed large trees small trees and shrubs they would need an HOA that's recorded with the register of deeds outlining maintenance of the common areas um, they would need to add up um, an improved common area per the plan residential development district ordinance um, before final approval they would have to submit an engineered plan meeting all the requirements for PRD major subdivision and all UDO requirements they have to submit it and it has to be approved by staff they would need to give us a detailed phasing of the when the units would be constructed um, the construction entrance would be located on Gaston Street extension um, the site is in the watershed um, area but at currently they're showing um, the impervious area to be 9.96 acres which is only 22 percent they're allowed to go up to 70 percent um, one of the main points the fire inspector made when you have a, um, a development that's over a hundred units uh, the fire code requires two entrances one of the issues the neighbors had was the there's let's go back to the plan and look there's an entrance that would go down Welland Street it would access through a neighborhood as well as the East Gaston Street the fire marshal has agreed that they could put in a locked gate with the Knox box that would be emergency access only because building code doesn't require that second entrance it's only fire code so emergency vehicles would have access to that entrance but not the general public the rest of the comments are you know the normal that they would the fire inspector needs to approve all plans prior to development they need to make sure that their hydrant locations or 400 feet um, between each building meet appendix D they have to coordinate with Nathan on street sidewalks and street trees coordinate with the electric department um, the typical erosion control plans NCDOT stated that they need a driveway permit and an encroachment agreement um, but they did say at 180 lots they did not require any turn lanes on East Gaston Street he said anything over 180 lots would require a left turn lane but as y'all know this is a conditional use so when it gets approved they cannot increase the size of this project without coming back before you there's a lot of water and sewer technical comments that would be conditions of approval I'm just going to skip reading all those to you as you know we have to talk about um, whether it's consistent and reasonable for approval or denial um, 
this proposed rezoning is not consistent with the Lincolnton land use plan, but we feel like it would be consistent and reasonable, but reasonable based on the following strategies from the plan. It allows for a mix of lot sizes in individual zoning districts in order to promote affordability, and it promotes innovative zoning to accommodate home ownership. If you were going to choose to deny the case, you would just say um, that, it, well, actually, it is consistent with the land use plan. Um, the land use plan states that we should try and reduce traffic impacts of development on adjacent thoroughfares and adjacent residential neighborhoods. Staff does recommend approving the rezoning from, of the property from R15 and office institutional to plan residential development, approval of the statement of consistency for approval of the rezoning request, that the zoning would be effective upon receipt of the signed conditions of approval, and that you, we would amend the future land use plan to show this as a mixed use residential commercial planning area. The applicant is here and they have a slideshow they would like to do. Do you want to ask me any questions now or do you want to wait until after their presentation? I'll wait after their presentation. Sorry, I answered for everybody on the board. Is everybody okay with that? <laughs> I, I have just one question. Um, the way that it's currently zoned, there could be properties built on it, could be homes. That's about right. They could do, you, do on that purple portion, they could do duplexes, and on the blue portion, they could do single family homes. Do you know approximately how many units could be approved as it sits now? We figured that out back in January, and it's hard to say because I can give you what it says on paper. Uh -huh. I can see if I can go back through my notes while they do their presentation and give you that number. But that's on paper, and that's doing it by acres or by the square footage of the land, and it doesn't take into account the stream buffers or the special highway overlay buffer or the buffers around the project. So I could give you a guesstimate, and I'll look into that while you're while they're doing their presentation, and I can come back to you hopefully with an answer. Thank you. I put the PowerPoint. You gave me a PowerPoint and a PDF. Okay. Yes, sir. <clears throat> hey, does he need to state his name and all this stuff? Ask these records. Okay, all right. Yeah, if you want to state your name, company you're with, address, please. Uh, my name is Brandon Wentz. I'm with True Homes, and we're based out of Monroe, North Carolina. You need the full address or just Monroe? Okay. Um, as I stated, I'm Brandon Wentz. I work with True Homes. I'm a senior project manager uh, on their land development team. And as staff has noted, we're here to discuss the project that we're calling the Towns of Wellington. Um, True Homes is a local builder. We're privately owned uh, by a few gentlemen here. We only do work in the Carolinas. Um, we have a culture that's built around trying to be uniquely exceptional in how we relate with our clients, associates, trade partners, uh, stakeholders, and community. Um, our goal is not only to just build houses, but we want to provide homes for, you know, our neighbors um, and our family members and friends because we do all live within the communities that we work in and sometimes even within those, those neighborhoods that we build. Uh, As staff noted, uh, you guys have seen the aerial shot of the proposed project. Um, we're asking that we get approval to uh, rezone this property to PRD. Uh, we think that the benefits to this approval would be the open space that we can provide with only going with the four uh, dwelling the per acre, 24% um, impervious area at the max, and then the additional housing that we would be able to provide within the community uh, being able to go to that rezoning. Uh, this is a site plan that we've made some notes on uh, coming out of the community meeting that we held. Some of the neighbors had concerns that staff noted with the traffic um, with us installing the Knox box and then proposed additional buffers uh, in the 30 foot stream buffer. We believe that uh, we can help provide some mitigation to those concerns moving forward. Um, this next slide is just zoomed in on 
two of those key issues that came up during that community meeting. These are some elevations um, that we provide within the plan that we can fit in those pads. Um, they're not the only elevations, but just a demonstration of, of a few of them. Um, we also understand that there uh, is some homeless on this property in or around. Um, we have reached out to the director at he does uh, yes, has a house. and you know we hope to be a partner not to just put these people out but um, help transition and and make that a positive impact moving forward because um, we we do believe in trying to be uniquely exceptional and a partner within our community and a good neighbor uh, with that I would like to thank you for your time and any questions that you might have for us? How did the, the community meeting go? I mean, I, you still have a pretty large group that's here. I, I the concerns was it mostly mostly about traffic that uh, there was concerns with with traffic overall coming into Wellington Drive. Um, I believe there's some consistent people that walk that road. Um, that was a concern. Um, some of the DOT improvements along Gaston uh, and then a big concern was backing up to existing residents with no buffer or the amount of trees that we would have to take out but I think we've demonstrated that instead of going at 14 percent or 14 per dwelling acre going forward we're trying to provide you know more of that open space and, and amenity that people can enjoy Um, I, I, for the site plan, I mean, you're asking to be rezoned so you can build, you know, that, uh, this many townhomes there. Um, was there anything else that, I, I, I guess, uh, stopped you from doing like a split where, because if it is two parcels right now, one is OI, the other one is R15. Was there like topography issues or anything that it, it lend itself to mainly townhomes instead of splitting it up into two different? I, yeah, I, having townhomes and also uh, single-family homes like a mixed use um, some of it's challenging with the creeks okay. uh, that run through there and the crossings um, Josh do you want to speak to anything on the engineering side that made it challenging if you'll just state your name and address yes, the company name Josh Motes. I'm with Merrick and company uh, we are the um, planning uh, and civil engineering firm um, working with true homes on this project do my address 301 South yeah, McDowell. Okay. Yeah, you're good. Cool. Yeah, so you, you ask about the two different zoning categories that exist out there and why we didn't go that direction. A uh, number of things. It's it's different different programmings and there's not consistency in what true homes would want to do on that property. Um, also, when you go to a rezoning, and especially one that's conditional, there's things that we're giving, things that we're doing that benefit the overall process. There's more refined, more strict requirements that we are now subject to, but it's, it's a straight benefit to the overall process and the end user of this development. Um, so that was kind of one of the big decisions is let's, let's go through the process, let's go to what would be recommended um, and then and rezone this to have a consistent uh, beneficial end product for everybody. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have any questions. Uh, any, any other questions from board members for the applicant? All right. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> All right, Gene, I'll let you. It's hard to find it on my phone right now, but just to give you an idea, um, we're going to do a little math real quick as a group. <laughs> so. Gene, this didn't have any other previously planned development on it prior to this. I mean, because I mean, we've seen a couple of phase twos for different communities. This wasn't ever supposed to. This wasn't ever part of like a phase two for the Wellington neighborhood. No. Okay. No, it was not. Um. Let's see. Hang on. Let's 
get myself zoning up. So we're gonna take, just give me just a minute so I can answer the question. I apologize, I couldn't find that, those numbers from before. And this is rough, so, because we're doing, doing this right here. Okay, so this blue portion is roughly 28.5 acres. The ordinance talks about, um, what did I say, 28.5? Other way. Oh, other way, sorry. <laughs> so that gives you a million, that's your square feet. So one, two, four, one, four, six, oh. So in R15, you can do 15,000 square foot lots. So I'm gonna divide that number by 15,000 square feet. So that's about roughly 82 homes that you could do on that portion. And then OI, I would have to look it up, but I think it's 15,000 square foot lots as well, but I'm not positive if you wanna look it up. But they could, they could potentially, and that's duplexes in OI. Let's look it up real quick. Well, no, and I said, and I said that that's that's paper math. It's not. It doesn't deal with any of the topography, any of the boundaries. That's why um, I just wanted to point that out. They wanted to. Ask, they asked the question, so I wanted to be able to answer it. There's, st there's still a considerable amount, considerable amount of homes could be put on the property. Probably without, sixty without I mean, any changes right. at all. Right. And they can still build townhomes on the front part. And if you don't want me to do the math, I won't. But since you asked. I appreciate, no, I, mean, yeah, it. I, yeah. I appreciate it. Uh, it gives a comparison for me to look at what's currently in place with no changes versus what might come with changes. So OI refers you to residential office. Residential office refers you to, to R15. <laughs> so, but one of the yeah. things that's allowed is the two family dwellings. Um, and let's just look and see if it gives us the square footage on lot sizes. Same as RF. This is the worst part about our ordinance. It refers to everything. So now we're going to RMF <laughs> to look at lot sizes. We can all learn how to work the ordinance. Yeah, if it gets to be too much, that's okay. It's, it's 12, somewhat similar. It is 12,000. You've already looked at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah you passed it and like, yeah, so when you look, called it. So the other acreage, so if, if it was 44. <laughs> I've never done math at a, count, at a meeting before. <laughs> so we're just gonna say 48 acres minus 28.5 is 15.5 acres. So I'm dividing this number by 12,000. So that's 56 duplexes. So that would be 112 doors. But you have those stream buffers running through there. You have those the special highway overlay. You do have the power line easement through there. So there's portions that you can't build on. If you go back and look at the site plan, See the power line easement that runs through? There's no development allowed on there. You're allowed to cross it with the road, but you're not allowed to develop on it. And then these colors right here are the stream buffers, these dark. So you have to take that into consideration. So those numbers, while they look big, they could get a substantial number. Can you zoom in on the front part up there? I mean, they already have time. So yeah, that's the creek that divides that, that lot, right? I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna pull it so we can look at it for closer. The site plan? Yeah. Just to see how many, like, they have drawn on there. It's plugged there. It, you notice it floods there all the time. Under the power line. Well, that, that uh, once again, that would be, that'd be up to the developer, like, you know, when to make a good thing. Right. right. We'll just Let's look real quick and just see if it's in the, any flood zone. So there's no, there's no, we can't do anything about flooding there because there is no flood zone or flood zone. Oh, uh, well, no, I picked, hang on. Oh. There's no, there's your census <laughs> box. There's no flood zones. The X means okay. that there's no flood zone. If you zoom out, whenever there's flood zone, you get these blue stripes and the yellow and the solid blue. So that, there's no flooding. I mean, it may flood there, but it's not. It's not part of it. And that's why they have the buffers. They required 30 right. feet on either side of that stream where they're not allowed to construct. All right, we ask everybody, please keep the chatter to a minimum. Thank you. So how far do you want me to zoom? No, no, I'm looking up here at the top left. I mean, because I'm just counting how many they have. Looks like they have planned at that point. So 10, 20, 30, so 50, roughly. And I do believe we have some people signed up to speak too. I don't know. Five, so that's 30, oh, sorry. 
42 in that, in that front part. That's what they have planned currently. Right, yeah. Where, you know, if they were to go the other route and, like, it if, they, if they did it what they could, I mean, it could be up to, what, 60? I know there's the different buffers and everything else, but right. just to kind of give a, a comparison on that at least right now. It looks like they've mitigated some of the, you know, the stream and correct. And, and I guess that was from the, the hearing that they had, the public meeting. Any other questions for Gene at this moment before we go to the public? The sorry, Gene. Oh no, you're good. No, I mean I, don't, I, don't, I, I had it on mine. I mean, it, it, if you didn't ask it, I was going to ask it. So uh, like, yeah, it, it, it's not a problem. Questions are good. You want to call out? Um, oh, the, uh, the only other thing is, I mean, outside of the residential, I mean, what else could be placed in these, like, especially OI? It's OI is typically like office or medical. Okay. Just building. It. Right, it's just business at that point. Okay. And we have six people signed up. This All right. Randy Markham. Yeah. Yeah, you, you come up to the podium, state your name and your address. Uh, do we need to set a time limit? That's right. a deal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I mean, we'll set a time limit. Uh, we'll follow kind of what council does every day. I mean, every meeting, which is three minutes. Um, I guess I'll do it. You want to do it? Yeah, that'd be great if you could. Um, so, yeah, just go ahead and state your name, your address for the record. Mark from Montaigne Julia Drive and Lincoln. Thank you, sir. The floor is all yours. Okay. All right. Well, you did a nice, they did a nice job with that whole proposal and they went through all the, all this stuff and, and we understand that. But, uh, there's another angle to this that I'd like to bring up. First of all, this is going to impact with traffic noise services. They're going to be drawn from seven developments that are already in that area. And those, these seven developments all have nice, real expensive houses in them. And, you know, I don't see, see putting that right on the edge of those because it does not fit the community. It's the same logic they used at East Lincoln when they just put, when they just uh, pulled the development because they said it doesn't fit, you know, the sidewalk, it doesn't fit the natures. And um, <clears throat> it's going to be, um, traffic is going to be the big problem because right now, and you're going to have to correct me because I'm doing the best I can with this. We have Lincoln Meadows with 187 townhouses coming, Clark's Creek Landing, 320, Carpenter Farms, 209, Huntington Hills, 60, uh, Lithia Town Homes, 20. There's a few up by the police department. So that's 850 new homes. That's, eight, that's 850 new homes, which is going to present per North Carolina, average, average home has two cars. So going on down further, using, using the R roads, there's one on Startown Road, and I heard that's 600. I don't know. That's County, though. That's the end of town. Sure. And then Gainesville Road, which is just out of town, 300 more places approved. Highway 182, three, uh, 600 place, places approved. So you end up with 1,500 new residences being ready to, uh, wait a minute, <clears throat> 1,500. You multiply all this out, and you end up with 5,520 cars in driving this road. These roads, and right now they're almost they're they're hard to get down now. Where are we going to put 5,500 cars? And the other part is they're all cutting down through all the side roads, and now the side roads have become truck traffic, and it would it would just going to gridlock the town. And, you know, it did that in, uh, what, Morrisville? We don't need to gridlock this town. I mean, it's, I just, I just, from seeing that, these numbers, you convince me, you can't do it. Because you can't, you know, it's hard to get through town now. I don't know if anybody agrees or not, you know. And uh, there's a lot of other issues, but we, I just don't think we want that. Do we want a town this big? Well, that's not why I live here. I want a small town. I know it's got to grow, it's got to thrive, it's got to survive. But I mean, this you t add all that building together, and we got to somewhere stop and take a breath and say, you know, it's not fitting. All right. That's thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I, and, I, and I will uh, address that to an extent. Um, the city works with DOT, and you know, for the planning, and I, I would, and I, 
correct me if I'm wrong, Gene, there is a study done for traffic, you know, for any development, and DOT is the one who comes in and says, hey, there, there's not a need at this point in time for expansion, and the roads can handle it. So understand that, you know, there's – there's other things at play than what we all perceive because I think we all think that of like, hey, I'm, you know, there's a lot of traffic through town, but for what DOT recognizes as like what is traffic that you know that's what we go by uh, for the city and you know it, it, for anything that comes in development wise. All right. It's not just that. What about fire resources, school waste? Right. Yeah, but that's a, but that's all that's all part of it. I mean, that, that's all looked at when they go through their review with the planning board. All right. Thank you for your time. Gary Smith. That's all right. Okay. Um, Edward Taggart? Yeah. Just come to the podium, sir. State your name and your address, please. Name and address. Uh, and you'll have three minutes. Let me start my clock here so I can keep track and not run over. All right, uh, my name's Ed Faggart, F A G G A R T, 108 Julia Drive. And hey, thanks for letting me you talk. Uh, we had a meeting. Uh, kind of a community meet and greet a couple months ago and in that the issue of the road connecting to Wellington Park was brought up and as you guys have heard the developer described that they would put a gate up to do that at the it's my understanding that the connection to Wellington and the second entrance into the project is to enable uh, the number of units to make the project economically viable so that is the driver is my understanding to have two entrances versus one and so um, as a result of the input that we gave at that meet and greet it was said well we'll just we'll put up a gate for emergency access yes now in principle uh, that that sounds like a good idea but but I urge y'all to think that through in practice number one is the drawing that they showed, I did not see any fencing or any barriers to keep folks from driving around the, the gate. Now, I may have overlooked that, but that's that's something to <coughs> consider later. Then, let's look at the, what, would, uh, what will occur uh, going forward. Or who is going to maintain that gate with some level of priority or urgency? We all know that there'll be a temptation there <coughs> to vandalize it, to get an easy entrance in and out there. So will the Homeowners Association be able or to uh, keep that gate in good repair, or will it impose upon those of us that are currently taxpayers, currently citizens, uh, to call and report it to whoever <coughs> the uh, planning board is a violation of their uh, uh, permit to do the development and to get the gate repaired and shut back number one number two in my discussion with Gary Stevenson the um, uh, city fire marshal he said that it is indeed going to be key access so once an emergency vehicle goes through let's say an ambulance what is the mechanism for, to get the thing closed back certainly an ambulance isn't going to stop and relock the gate but it, that's going to impose a burden on the, the local citizens to report it to whoever to get it closed back. Then number three is, if the gate falls into disrepair, it's my understanding an option per the fire code is to say, well, just block the gate open. You know, that gives you free emergency access. Well, at that point... That, that's your time. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Randy Manchin? Manchin. Manchin. To the podium. Name and address, please, sir. Okay. Randy Manchak, 102 Welland Street. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm a partner, Victoria and I. We've been residents, homeowners in Wel Wellington Park on Welland Street for 10 plus years now. Uh, when we moved back to North Carolina, we chose Lincoln because it's a nice, low-key quiet town and when I saw this project uh, I think it's on on the county website changes like this need to be, be made in harmony with the properties that are already in place 
And I don't think anyone can make that argument that this proposal is in harmony with Wellington Park or the surrounding homeowners. And uh, I'm also concerned about the viability of this project when the main entrance, when the two landmarks are going to be an abandoned cotton mill and a semi-trailer drop yard. Uh, is it going to be a viable, viable community if a change was made that would uh, help our, our city? And I think that that is a reasonable question to ask. But most important, as I said, this is not in harmony with uh, the communities that surround it. Uh, there is zoning in place that is in harmony with it. And I think that must be maintained. Thank you. Cindy Kohler. Up to the podium, name and address, and you have three minutes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Cindy Kohler, 201 Wellington Drive. Um, I'm vehemently opposed to this because of property tax values. It will devastate us. And to be quite frank with you, I'll be soon putting my house on the market because I want to be closer to my grandchildren, not because I don't love Lincolnton. I've lived here plus 30 years. I've lived in the same house plus 30 years. I've enjoyed deer, rabbit, squirrels, fox, all on that property. I've also, there's an endangered species, by the way. They won't tell you that. What they won't tell you also is the reason they didn't do townhomes just on the front is because in their words at that meeting, it doesn't pencil, which means they're not gonna make any money. Now I'm a capitalist, I believe in business should make money and that's why you may you have a business I also owned a business at one time but don't let them fool you that we're just being good neighbors that's why we only did this no why do you think the 180 huh there's a lot of thing, questions out there but the one thing is parking I don't think they have 180 parking spots so that's a question two. We're gonna, I'm gonna find the answer to that between now and city council meeting. But there's the creek. You're trying to put a square peg in a round hole is what I'm quite frankly thinking of. I would welcome beautiful homes that match our homes. And I think everybody in this neighborhood would. It's not we don't want it to ever be touched. We want it on par of what's already there. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Jim Baxter. To the podium, name and address. You have three minutes, sir. My name is Jim Baxter. I'm Vice President of Mohegan Mills, 1419 Gaston Street. Uh, right now, this property is zoned exactly like it should be. There are no residential properties on Gaston Street extension. And OI is a transition area between business and residential. The reason these folks can't put more than 180 is because this property has topographical problems from one end to the other. You said it's not in a flood zone, but they were homeless people living down at the creek that got flooded out here about three years ago. You think that creek don't get up, it really does. Dumping that much traffic on Gaston Street, DOT has not done a traffic study. I'm there every day, seven days a week. No traffic study's been done. It is a nightmare now to get out onto 15027, especially if a truck pulls up there in such a way that it doesn't trip the light. I can't imagine the traffic nightmare the property line at Gaston Street is with the center of the road for only 84 feet. Then it starts to go to this parcel side of the road. Mohegan owns that property. I don't know how they can access. I know it's road right of way, but how do they use our property just because it's on the road right of way? And they're gonna put a turn lane in this is a dangerous curve. You guys know where it's at. You're going to dump all that traffic in that curve? I recommend the board, please, do not change zoning on this. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. 
Gene, yes, yes. is there anything that you need to, need to address from any of that or have any? I mean, you handled the NCDOT part. On the parking in PRD, you're required on multifamily 1.5 spaces per unit, which I know sounds crazy, but that's the requirement. Um, and I believe they have two spaces for each townhome. And there's going to be, uh, if I remember correctly, yeah, there's going to be no parking signs on the street? That appendix D. He makes, uh, our fire marshal is very strict on his appendix D, so all new neighborhoods coming in, no parking signs are going up. Okay, so they already have two parking spots planned for each townhome, and there, there, there is guaranteed no parking. Okay, thank you. Uh, the applicant, do you wish, do y'all wish to come back up and, and you know, a, a statement back to anything that was stated? If you do, just please come back up to the state uh, podium. Since you're new, you get to state your name and, and, and the company you're with. Thanks, guys. Uh, Sean Gasparini. I'm with uh, True Homes. Our corporate address is 2649 Breckenridge Center Drive, Monroe, North Carolina. Uh, I'll be brief. I appreciate everyone's time this evening. Uh, we heard from the neighbors, uh, staff, uh, and adjacent landowner, and just a, a few things that were touched on today. Uh, traffic, we did certainly try to hear the neighbors in that neighborhood meeting um, and address those concerns as best we could with the proposed gate and the Knox lock. The fire code requires a second entrance over a certain threshold. It's 100 units. So once we got above 100 units to meet the fire code, we needed the second access point. To mitigate the neighbor's concerns, though, we then proposed a Knox lock across that second access point. So that was the thinking behind that. Um, and the, the gate will be the HOA's responsibility to maintain and secure. And all yes, that sir. Stuff. So what I would propose is between now and council, I was talking to our engineer, Merrick, I would encourage those guys to put together a detail, uh, very clearly outlining the specifications for the gate. Let's make sure it's sturdy enough that it's uh, the right of the right specs. Um, and then we'll bake into the HOA's budget and ongoing maintenance of that gate so that there's uh, no concerns there. Um, also, staff has noted the various conditions of the rezoning if approved. And so one of those conditions, I presume, Gene, would be the gate itself and the maintenance of it. And so if it's not, I would encourage that we write that in uh, so that that concern was addressed and alleviated. Um, the last thing that I heard was the right of way on Gaston Street. We do, in fact, have frontage on Gaston. Um, if there's a survey issue, I'm not aware of it yet. But walking out of here, I'm going to have our surveyors look into that. Um, and then lastly, if you don't mind, I do want to address the comment that was made, I think it was by Cindy, regarding whether or not the project pencils. That is true. I, I believe I actually said that in the neighborhood meeting. And there's some truth to that. Uh, as a developer, when you look at a project, you have to consider the purchase price, and then you have to do some simple math, right, and determine, all right, if I can get X number of units on the project, I'm then paying Y per unit. And does that simple math make sense or not? And when we looked at the underlying zoning, it did not make sense. And so we recognized that we could do single family homes uh, on a portion of the site and duplexes. And while that does sound appealing, uh, frankly, that's very appealing. A, a mix of product is actually what we prefer on projects. But the economics of this one did, did not make that possible, frankly. Um, and then lastly, I would put out in terms of zoning, and I, I apologize, I know I said that already. But in terms of zoning, uh, as a land planner, when I think about zoning and I think about transitional parcels and uses, this project really fits that mold, or this site, if you will, because we've got existing single family on one side, we've got some industrial uses on the other side of it, and we've bordered by a highway. And so it's transitional in my mind. And so multifamily or townhomes in this case uh, are a nice transitional land use. So anyways, when we looked at the site, that, that kind of jumped off the board at us. Um, with that, I'd be happy to answer questions that you folks might have. Any questions from? Nope. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for your time. We appreciate okay. it. Uh, Gene, I do have one question. He, he made the comment. I um, just want to verify. So, if there was, uh, no matter what, there's a 100 units in this development, they, you know, it, it requires a second. Anything over 100, 100 required. Right. Fire, fire code requires right. a second. So, even if it was kept the same and like, it, it went down the road of they put single family homes, like, I mean, just by the kind of it quick math, it, it, it would have to have still have that second entrance. Yeah, and it would still be uh, part of it, even though if it did have the single family homes on that one part. Okay. 
just wanted to make sure that that like I, not that's it, I didn't trust him. I just didn't know. It doesn't matter if it's townhome, home, single family, any development over a okay. hundred units is right. a, needs that second. Thank you. Any other questions for Gene? Um, I'm going to move into board discussion only. All right, board. What you got? I think, what? The, yeah. I think the kind of weighing two things out, one of which the way it's currently zoned mm -hmm. and what could be developed there and how the neighbors are expressing the concern about having their single family homes back up to a different type of development that would be that close is the hard thing for me to weigh out. And the number of houses are somewhat similar. Mm -hmm. It's not like this, it's a huge number difference. What the difference appears to be the perception of the, the type of housing. So that's that's what I'm. Well, the only, yeah, you know, like that's, that's a valid point, but I mean, you couldn't really expect to, to put premium type homes on that property with the highway, with the, it's, it's, yeah, it's a transition. Mm -hmm. Topography plays a big and you can't and you can't you can't play the game of well you can only put light styles of developments together otherwise there would be just a string of like style developments you have to mixed have use to mixed use at some point you have to you know make that decision and but it it would be mixed use and there would be duplexes and single family homes correct. But what I think what Greg, tell me if I'm wrong. Like what you're talking about is like, a, a, for what most of the neighbors talked about, is that they would be okay if, if there was like family homes, like what's in their neighborhood, right there. And tell me if I'm wrong. It's like you're saying, hey, this is this is more transitional. It's not going to be economically uh, right. viable to go in there. Right. But, you're not going to be able to get the same homes that you have in their neighborhood, right against the highway. Um, oh, you got the broken one. Um, to topography is going to be also the. I think it plays into it. That's what we've heard is that like it, it fits this instead of like having single family homes and like you know for different for the runoffs. Uh, Gene, how much distance is there between the existing neighborhood and the proposed development? I mean, I see the thirty foot setback. I mean, I. I, I and I, I know that's power line, so that's already been there's there's no trees there, and, right. and I think the developer made a comment of you know about like the community meeting and also keeping some of the I uh, I guess more mature growth you know to kind of block it but you know to have a, a buffer between the two. I was just looking to see what the easement was real quick. I think it's 60 feet. Okay. So so you can see, hang on, let's go back. So there's 60 feet on that, see where it's the, the shaded lines, that's the power line easement. And okay. so that, that would be 60 feet, and then there's an additional where these buildings are. I think that's a 20 foot buffer, that shaded gray area. Which, oh, the one down, okay. Right. So, I, sorry, I, I was so trying to find your mouse. That's 80 feet from like these people's backyard. Okay. And that looks like the minimum for that small group of homes right there. Homes. Here, I believe this is a 30 foot, 30 foot buffer. So for these property owners, it would be 30 feet. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, I mean, to your point though, John, I, you know, because it, it, I think the biggest thing is they're more worried about if I'm wrong, I mean, it is traffic. I mean, I think it's all of our concerns at all times. No matter what, they're going to have over 100 units, you know, and it's going to require that second one. And I mean, and I don't think they're going to be happy for, you know, all right, if they were to say, you know what, we're going to do single family, but now we're going to take the gate out and it's going to have to be a secondary, you know, access. I mean, I don't think, I think that's their biggest concern is people going in and out of their neighborhood and the developer by putting that gate there that kind of negates you know th their worry about like going through their neighborhood at least right. um, I mean it sounds like the developers worked with the neighbors to accommodate their concerns to a great extent uh, excuse me uh, uh no I we're hey, this is board discussion only thank you um, as, as a board 
our job isn't to weigh the the emotional right. part of this. Our job is to decide whether this is a reasonable change to make to the to the zoning. Um, and given the lay of the land, the placement of the land, I don't know that that, that there's a better option. I mean, I haven't seen a better option. Uh, you know, housing is still by and large unaffordable. Uh, yeah. This helps to mitigate some of that. Um, you know, the DOT doesn't appear to think traffic's an issue. Uh, I mean, I, I don't see a, a, a solid reason to, to deny the change. Okay. Any other conversation from the board? I don't have anything. We missed anything from the legal side? Good. Okay. Um, with that being said, then I will you know, call, I'll close the public hear hearing. Uh, before I entertain a motion, I do want everybody to understand here that our board, like whatever our recommendation is for or against, it does go to city council. Council is the one who will make the final determination of whether or not this is approved or, 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 or denied. Yeah, our job is, is just to right. lay and out the, the, the and factual you, pros and cons. And, and can you go forward. back to the... It, it, to your slide where it, it you have the two sides of like uh, for approval and like yeah, for staff recommendations the statements of consistency there we go statement of consistency just so we all have this in front of us and um, as I go into this all right uh, having said all that uh, I will entertain a motion either for for approval or denial I'll make a motion to approve with staff recommendations and send this to council. We have a motion for approval with staff recommendations. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. We need to vote on the no's. Hey, oh, yeah. Sorry. You're the only person no. that. Yeah. And we have one no. All right. Thank you. We will now move on to our second. Case uh, ZMA-1-204, application from Chris Kilby, Kilby Adventures, requesting the rezoning of 0 .10 acres from the residential office RO district to the central business district. The subject property is located at 125 West Water Street, parcel 1 ID 00510. I'm just going to wait a minute, let them clear yeah. out the room. Just so that way the noise okay. kind of affects them. If y'all can step outside, please, so we can continue, continue the the hearing. I mean, the, the meeting. Yeah. Thank y'all. Thank you. Um, this one will look familiar to some of you because this was originally zoned central business, and it was rezoned um, to R for RO. So currently, the property that we're looking at. Um, is 125 West Water Street. It's the blue box with the red around it. Um, it's currently zoned residential office. The applicant is proposing to rezone to central business. Um, the property was formerly used as the Lincoln Times building and currently it has approximately 4,200 square foot building on the property. Adjacent properties are commercial and zoning around the site is a mixture of central business district and residential office. But as you can see, all of the adjacent properties are central business. Um, in 2022, Anderson Properties requested a conditional district rezoning um, to RO because they were going to create two residential units. Since that time, this property has been sold and the new owner wants to rezone back to central business um, to be more compatible with the area and to have a wider variety of permitted uses. It's just an aerial showing you where it is. It's right beside the city's new parking lot. Street views. It's currently in the central business um, planning area, so the rezoning um, of the property to the central business is consistent with the intent of the land use plan. We do feel that it's consistent and reasonable. It's consistent with the land use plan um, with the strategy to work with landlords of vacant and underutilized commercial buildings to develop strategies for adaptive reuse. Um, and the building, we feel it's reasonable because it's immediately adjacent to central business on all sides. Um, 
if you weren't, and I apologize to you, John Waters, for this one, um, we had a discussion about um, the denial statements. I could not come up with anything in the land use plan to give you a reason <laughs> to say that you should deny this. So the only reason I can give you is that it wouldn't be desirable. So staff does approve recommending the rezoning of the property from RO to central business and approving the statement of consistency for approval of the rezoning request. Do you have any questions for me? Any questions for Gene? No. no ma'am. The applicant is here, but if you don't have any questions. Yeah. I, 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 I mean, does anybody have any questions for Chris? No? Okay. All right. And is there anybody here to speak? No. no. I don't think we had anybody. So let's just start. Okay. No. I have one person signed up for a different case. Okay. All right. Uh, since there's no one here to speak, you know, uh, for the public hearing side of it, I'll go ahead and close the case and we'll go into board discussion only. Any discussion by the board? No, none, not from me. Okay. Uh, then I will entertain a mo uh, so I'm going to close the public hearing, entertain a motion uh, for approval or denial. I move to approve and uh, staff recommendation. All right. We have approval with staff recommendations. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Make sure you, you, yeah, no, no, make sure you, you just want to say no just for the fun of it. Not this time. <laughs> no, I don't do that. You know I don't. Do I know. That. I'm just giving you a hard time. All right. Uh, then we'll move on to our next case. Um, that will be ZMA-2-2024. Application from, I'm not going to, Raina? Is that? Raina. Hey, got it right. And Robert ba uh, Brakefield requesting the rezoning of 0.803 acres from the office institutional OI district to the rural residential R25 district. The subject property is located at 442 Buffalo Shoals Road, parcel ID 26134. So it's currently zoned office institutional and the proposed rezoning is R25. The current use is single family. They want to continue to use it as a single family. Um, this is an aerial of the property. You can see its proximity to the hospital. This is just a street view of the house from Buffalo Shoals Road, and this is the house. This is a look further back. Um, when the hospital was built, several of the property owners in that area rezoned from R25 to OI, I think with, to potentially sell the land or they thought it might be more valuable. In the past years, if you look at this map, we've had four different property owners. See these that are the blue that are surrounded in yellow? Those have all went from R25 to OI and then back to R25. <laughs> so he, all he's doing is requesting to do the same. So this is his property in red just asking to go back to OI. Um, they did amend the land use plan back during that rezoning. So currently his property is in the OI, or the IO, I'm sorry, it's opposite on the land use plan um, planning area. But you can see it's surrounded by residential suburban. And so we would recommend that it go back to residential suburban and that's more fitting with the area. Um, so it's consistent because the institutional office area planning areas are appropriate for new or expanded institutional uses and associated office developments. A single family dwelling is more consistent um, with the land use than office institutional would be. So the rezoning would make the property more compatible with the surrounding area as, where, as well as making the future land use map more cohesive. Um, and so, again, on this one, there was not one single thing I could find. It's a single family home. There's nothing in the land use plan that says we shouldn't <laughs> let it be a single family home. Um, these, I wish we didn't have to do statements for both ways, but we do. So staff does recommend approving the rezoning of the property from office institutional to R25, approving the statement of consistency for approval, and then amending the future land use map to show the parcel in the residential suburban planning area. Any questions? Any questions for Gene? Oh. Nope. All right. Is the applicant here to speak? Or do, if you want to speak, you can. You don't have to. Good. Okay. I, I, I got you. Um, is there anybody here to speak? No, no, okay. All right. So then what we'll go into is go into board discussion only. Any questions, concerns from the board? No. All right. None? All right. Then I'll close the public hearing and I'll entertain a motion for approval or denial. Motion to approve. We have a motion to approve with staff recommendations. Staff recommendations. With staff recommendations. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? No. All right. We will move on to our next case, which is ZTA-2-2024. Application from Jason Cunningham, U.S. Bonding Company, requesting a text amendment to Section 153, I mean, dot 117, General Manufacturing and Commercial GMC District, 
of the Lincolnton Unified Development Ordinance to allow bell bond service as a permitted use. Gene? So currently, the UDO does not allow bail bond services as a permitted use. Um, we have some that are grandfathered in as non-conforming uses, and we've received an application requested that they be allowed as a permitted use in the GMC district. Um, there's areas of GMC that are convenient to the courthouse and the sheriff's office, so it's an appropriate area for bail bond offices. Um, GMC is designed primarily for general commercial and industrial land uses, including manufacturing, processing, and assembly of parts and products, distribution products at wholesale outlets and retail outlets, along with a other variety of uses. So we don't consider adding bail bond service as a permitted use would compromise this zoning district in any way. Um, so the proposed request seeks to amend section 153.117 um, to allow it as a permitted use, and staff does recommend the approval. And so if you go down and look, this is all that would happen in the ordinance. There's already a definition for bail bond service, even though they're not permitted, they're not allowed in. <laughs> so the definition was already there, so I didn't have to touch that. So the only thing that would happen is we would just add it as a line item under permitted uses for GMC. Do you have any questions for me? Uh, where is it Where is it permitted right now? Like, is it, it yeah, it's, not, it's not permitted anywhere. Because I remember that we used to have them here at Central Business, and I was just wondering so, if it, so the applicant that's here today, he had a bail bond service in Central Business, and he could have stayed there. He was grandfathered in. He could have stayed there for eternity. But he moved to GMC and because he didn't realize. And so he moved to be closer to the sheriff's office. And so he wants to um, do this the right way, and so the right way to do this would be to make it a permitted use so that he has a, a, a conforming business. Okay. So we do have to look at the statements of consistency. I was skipping that part. So um, the proposed amendment is consistent with the adopted land use plan. Um, the approval of the amendment is reasonable and in the public interest and in that the change to the UDO gives property owners more flexibility in how they develop their property. If you did choose to deny it, um, you could say that it would um, maintain the current development restrictions intended to protect nearby properties. But staff does recommend approving the amendment and adopting the statement for approval. How many uh, bondsmen do we have grandparented in now? Grandfather. I think just two. Grandparent? Grandfather. Is it? Is it? Uh, is oh, it grandpa, grandparent. Grandparent. Okay. Oh, sorry. You're right. No, that's okay. I was just like, oh. <laughs> that's <laughs> unconforming uses. How about we go with that? Okay. Um, I think we only have the two. I would have to look it up. I would have to Google bail bonds in Lincolnton, but I think we have two. Okay. Thank you. And it would make both of them conforming uses. If that's true, if that's true. All right. I'll take it. Um, Does this. It's the local. Leave it. Alone. Keep other bail bonds from coming in. Yes, it would. It would prevent other. We would. Basically, you're, without the change, we're enabling a limiting competition for that. Right. But he, but he moved, so he like his business would not no, be. What I'm saying is, even without that, if it, you'd change. have one left that would like <laughs> yeah. that, that would be yeah. grandfathered in, like yeah, it's grandfathered, grandfathered. grandfathered in. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yes, to your point, yes, you'd be limiting competition because you'd only have one that's actually technically allowed. Correct. Right. With, yeah. But the benefit to approving it is then both non-conforming uses would then be conforming Conform. uses. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Any other questions for Gene? Does the applicant want to say anything? There is. Well, the applicant's I here. And then the, the, there's somebody signed up to speak okay. for him as well. This name, address, please. Jason Cunningham, 101 North McDowell Street. So I own U.S. Bonding, um, the office here in Lincolnson. We've serviced Lincoln County with an office up here for over 20 years. We've had an office downtown Main Street, 333 East Main Street, for over 10 years. When the order come in place to ban bondsmen from coming into downtown, I was never served anything. I wouldn't have moved out of my existing office to an office closer to the jail, which makes more sense for us. If somebody would have served something on me and said, hey, you're grandfathered in, you can't move your business. We were never notified anything. The office I moved into, we actually tried to get into that office probably seven or eight years ago. There was a previous owner to it. He wasn't interested in leasing out any space. Another gentleman bought the business, I think, you know, five, six years ago. We went to him, got lucky. He was looking for a tenant to rent the building. We rented the building, and it makes more sense for us. In the bail bond business, you know, sometimes we don't have the best appealing people that we deal with. 
So where we're at now beside the jail, it takes it away from the downtown area. Before we had people handcuffed, shackled, meet police officers, whatever it may be, in a downtown you got people going to the post office, checking their mail, getting coffee, and here we are suited up with gear protecting ourselves to come pick up the bad and the ugly. Now she may have a picture of it. It's beside the jail, it's secluded, it's out by itself. Um, there is another bonding company across the street that has been there. Um, as she said, they're grandfathered in. But just to let you know, on that bonding company, it's changed ownership three different times. So as long as they stay in that building, they're allowed to be a bail bond company. But that company's also changed ownership three different times as well. So all we're asking to do is to remain in business for Lincoln County that we've been doing. Just now let us locate beside the jail where we are so it fits you know, the nature of the business. Any questions for the applicant? No. Nope. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. All right. You yeah, we have your I don't think I can say anything better. Okay. All right. That'll work. I appreciate it. Now, I assume there's no more questions for Gene at that point. So, um, we're going to go to board discussion only. <coughs> Any discussion by the board? None? No. All right. Now, close the public hearing. Entertain a motion for approval or denial. I'll make a move. I'll move to approve. What's that recommendation? Of course. Just want to make sure. Yeah, I, I, you guys say it, right? It's got to be on the record. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay. Then we'll move on to. Uh, thank you. Thank yes. You. Thank y'all. Our last case is ETA 3 2024. Application from Jennifer Gunter requesting a text amendment to section 153. Dot one one three a two central business CB uh, of the Lincoln Unified Development Ordinance to allow permanent permanent cosmetic as a permitted service. So currently, the UDO groups permanent cosmetics in with tattooing. They're yep. not allowed as a separate independent use. Um, we've received an application requested that it be allowed as a permitted use in the central business district. And I don't know if you fellows are aware, but us ladies know that in the central business, there's been an influx of spa type businesses um, like wellness, health, beauty. Um, so the purpose of the central business district is to permit, permit concentrated development of a wide variety of retail establishments, personal services, and professional and non-professional offices. Adding permanent cosmetics as a permitted use, we don't feel like would compromise that district as either. Um, so what would need to happen, the proposed amendment would um, amend both the definition section and the central business section. Um, staff does recommend approval of the amendment and here's what the definition would look like. Um, permanent cosmetics, the application of pigments to or under the human skin for the purpose of permanently or semi-permanently changing the color or other appearance of the skin. Permanent cosmetics shall include but are not limited to cosmetic enhancement or restoration of eyebrows, lips, hairline on the top of the skull or for areola repigmentation post mastectomy. Permanent cosmetics do not include body art, body piercing, or the adornment of the body with letters, images, drawing, or other illustrations. And so we also included the tattoo definition because we would want to strike out cosmetic tattooing and replace it with permanent cosmetics. And then we would add it as a permitted use under central business. Does anybody have any questions? Well, let's do the statements. Um, so uh, with this, the approval of the amendment is reasonable and in the public interest for the same reason. It, it, in the change that to the UDO gives property owners more flexibility for permitted uses, or if you were going to deny it, um, it would be that it would maintain the current development restrictions intended to protect the properties nearby. So any questions on that? Can you go back up? Uh, just a quick question. Okay. So uh, I, to the definitions. Yeah, and uh, so we're just defining it here of saying, like, this is separate from tattoo. And permitted uses still don't list as tattoo parlors. Tattoo the parlors are allowed in planned business only. Okay. And so right now, um, the applicant could go to a planned business area and open that. Okay. But there's so many like high end areas in central business, and the services that she's providing are high end. The, the so, reason that this gets oh. back to something that we heard a couple of years ago when the they wanted to do a tattoo shop. Right. That's where I, that's where I was going and saying okay, trying to understand like how if they if they connect or if it is separate cases. Well, they were doing, I believe, at the. While that lady also did permanent whatever, cosmetics, she this, wanted a tattoo did, studio. Right. Right. They were doing yeah, tattoos yeah. with yeah, permanent right. cosmetics, and this she had both in her establishment. This out. 
Yeah, yeah. Because we, because there was other additional requirements that we put in place mm -hmm. for that. Okay, so we'll be in touch. That that's that was my main thing. Is like, it, are we going to run back into the what we did before? But we don't, so we're good. I feel like this is more beauty services, yes. and you may disagree, but I, I don't feel like it's the same. Okay. Lines as actual tattoos. All right. Was that, was that unusual for communities to have these linked together, tattoo and... I looked, and some have it linked together, but there are a lot of communities that are starting to break it out because of this reason. I think it's a growing... It's a growing... Mm -hmm. ...that sprung out of the tattoo industry. All right. And the applicant is here if you have any questions for her. If the applicant would like to speak... You're... you're good. Okay, come on up. State your name and... Yeah, yeah. Name and address. Jennifer... Flowers, I gotta add my maiden name okay. in there, Gunter, 2518 Ten Mine Road, Lincoln, North Carolina. So I have been here my entire life. Um, I built right beside where I grew up. My brother's on the other side of where we grew up and we still own all the property that Cecil Flowers purchased and was Cecil Slaw Company back in the day. So I've watched Lincoln grow, I've watched all the changes, I've been a part of a lot of it. I have had my cosmetology license for almost 34 years now. Um, I've done a little bit of other things as well. Um, and I really didn't know what I was getting into when this all started. But I'm glad, I'm glad to be here and I'm glad to know what the differences are because what I'm offering is the cosmetic art side of what maybe a tattoo is because it's a permanent ink. Um, it is not described as a tattoo. It is a tattooed brow, um, lips, eyeliner, and some of the other things that she mentioned there that could possibly be services if people in the area are looking for those services. So that led me into talking to Karina at LinkedIn Suites on Main, and before I knew all this and was trying to figure it out, I leased a suite from her. So, um, I am in there now currently as a licensed cosmetologist in a licensed salon um, doing gel nails and some other things, but it ties into almost every woman that comes in there looking for these type of services that are going to Hickory, which is where I was trained from, which led me there because of some bad issues I had experienced. And that led me into a passion of trying to offer that service to women, men, in this area as well. They're going to go to Hickory. It's going to go to Charlotte, a lot of it. And I, d I know from my experience and what I've been through and things I've seen, things I've heard, there's a lot of people that's not educated right in it. And I have took it upon myself to, um, I have had extensive training in it, certification. Um, and I, I understand I can go down a couple blocks and do it. I understand that. Um, I can do it for my residence. But the place I'm at at Lincoln Suites on Main is very, it's a very reputable place. And every person in there cares about Lincoln as well. Um, I think I'm about the only one in there that's been here and watched all and can tell you that I've watched every change go through Lincoln. So, when we started talking about it, that was the only way was really just to come up with some type of way to reword it. Um, I do believe that in the coming future, it may become par part of a cosmetologist license. Um, there has been talk about that, um, or possibly even as esthetician, which I'm classified as because I'm a cosmetologist. So I do hope that that's something that comes in the future. Um, I understand your concerns about tattoos and I understand concerns about what that can bring and what you've tried to protect over the years. I completely respect that. Um, but I can assure you those are not the type of services that I recommend or stand behind. And there will be no tattooing on any other parts of the body or any, you know, if I'm approached with that. My job is to um, address the needs of the cosmetic arts and things that, that women want to go to a spa and a private setting and not to a tattoo <clears throat> parlor to have done. Any questions for the applicant? No. No? Okay. Thank you so very much. I'm assuming that I think Richie or Pam are here to talk, like, you know, on this case. You're not here to talk again for this case, right? No. Okay. Just want to make sure both of you, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. 
All right. Uh, if there's no other questions, then I will move to board discussion only. Any questions, concerns by the board? Not for me. All right. If not, then I'll look for either approval or denial. I move to approve uh, with staff recommendations. Approval with staff recommendations. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All, uh, anybody opposed? No. Nope. All right. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Uh, since that is everything, Gene, anything else? I'll make the motion to approve. I, I, I got to ask. I, I'm, I'm your thorn, right? I have a no. question to ask. No, just, just for my um, direction. And the last meeting we had, we had a discussion in which it was said to abstain from a vote was a yes vote. Yes. And I think that's incorrect if we follow Robert's Rules of Order. If we don't follow Robert's Rules of Order, what rules do we follow? We so, actually looked, I looked into that. Um, I was going to pull it up. And that was just, I was confused after. Okay, yeah, yeah, I that's knew, fine. I uh, knew that it wouldn't change the outcome of the right. vote at the time. But then on my, on my walk home, I yeah. was thinking, now wait a minute. Talking about abstaining or just not voting. Because you didn't recuse yourself in the situation, therefore you wouldn't be voting. Right. Recusing is fine. But we looked it up and I've got the paperwork in my office. It was just a crazy day and I did not bring it down oh, no, for you. That's okay. Um no, Ashley did some research on it and she gave me a cheat sheet. And abstaining is a yes vote. I know that sounds crazy, so you have to recuse yourself instead of abstaining like if there's a conflict you have okay. to recuse yourself right yeah, but that's that's the only reason that you would is is through that conflict of recusal you wouldn't come up here would you have to recuse yourself prior to the the hearing it's just the one case you just okay. recuse yourself from the one case okay so that's the, all right so then it just goes to like so it just go to four of us that's reasons why you can do that you can't do it just because you, you have to really know. prove a conflict Okay, I, I'm sorry. You have to really prove a conflict. You can't not just not to want to vote. Yeah, you have, yeah, there has to be a reason why. So, and and kind of the standard Roberts rules that there is an abstention, that is a no vote. Uh, this is an exception to that. Under statute, I believe it is. It yeah. Is. Okay. It and, is. And, well, that's what I didn't know. So yeah, that, that's one thing I, I can then pull because I, I want to say four or five months ago, looked at it. And yeah, it is because I think the idea is, I think the ultimate public policy behind it is that we don't abstain. You know, it, it, you don't vote. recuse yeah. yourself let me tell, yeah, yeah, let me unless tell you, you have why. a genuine conflict. If I'm a vote. politician and we have a controversial vote, and I know that three of y'all are going to vote for it, instead of me having to take the heat for voting for it, I can just sit here and not no. vote. I don't have to vote. No, I'm just not well. That has happened, I'm sure, in the past. That's why they're saying you may say you're not voting, but you're voting yes. Do the vote. But, and believe okay. me, there would be people that would do, do that it. for that reason. <laughs> I'm just saying. That's, yeah, yeah. That's, you got to say no. You don't want to sit there. You got to say no out loud. That's, that's the main reason you have been elected. If you're a council member, by the people, John, amazing. you are enough. voting on their behalf. Mm -hmm. Amazingly mm -hmm. enough, politicians often don't have the courage that you do to stand up. But that's the reason. I mean, that's fine. I mean, that's, 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 that's the main reason. That's that, that was that yeah. was after that meeting. I just thought, now that doesn't, from my experience, make yeah. sense. But now I understand it. Okay. What was your reason for voting though, on the on the development? My reason. For hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's let's go ahead and adjourn, yes. and and, 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 and yeah. we, then okay. we can have yeah, then we have a board discussion. Okay. I, 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 I motion for adjournment. I make a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. All in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. All right.